Hi, everybody. It's Coach Brian Dupre here. And I'm going to take a few minutes and talk about the CARES Act that was just recently passed by Congress, signed by President Trump. And I know many of you are a little scared right now about your businesses. And uh, I've done a lot of coaching calls in the last couple of weeks with people. I've cried with people, prayed with people. Um, it's been a rough time for all of us. And I've been saying for about two weeks now that help is on the way. Well, guess what? Help has arrived. And for pretty much I think for everybody, I've talked to uh, up to 80 or 90 people, maybe 100 people I've talked to in the last two, three weeks. Uh, I don't think there's one person that this bill will not help in one way, shape, or form or another. And there's such a wide disparity between some of our centers in rural areas, especially around New York, and some of our centers may be out in Montana. So there's a wide range of how many kids are still attending and as openings and closures and staff related, there's a lot of wide difference. Um, but the one thing that they do have all in common is that this bill will help you. And I'm gonna talk a little bit, I'm gonna share some slides. And on Tuesday uh, on our open Q&A call, I'll give us a little bit more details as I learn them. But I wanted to just get this information out to you as fast as possible because it's a little bit different than what I covered the other day. The, the House passed a different version uh, than what I was reading to you in the Senate proposal. Uh, now that this has been signed by the President, I've got the exact facts. So I want to get into them as fast as possible because I know you guys are going to want starting a plan together uh, starting this weekend. <clears throat> so let me share my screen with you. Put my glasses on so I can see. And let me go ahead and start the part here. All right, so this is a CARES Act. It's coronavirus relief for small businesses. And it is a about 800, 900 page bill. And I hold 11 pages of the actual loan process in my hand here. Um, I'm probably gonna update, upload the actual bill uh, to the Facebook group later today when I post this. I'm also gonna uh, post a little bit of highlight about the bill and some of the things in it and other things in it. And then I'll obviously post this recording. So if you're watching this recording, then you should have access to the other stuff as well. So as a former legislator, I do know how to read bills. Sometimes it gets a little bit technical. Uh, even though I wasn't in Congress, I was in the main legislature, our bills are written very much the same. Um, but there is some ambiguity in here. I'm gonna give you the best that I know. Some of it is subject to what they call rulemaking, meaning that the, the legislation lays out certain parameters and then it's up to uh, the Small Business Administration in this case to create rules as far as how to implement some of the things in here. So even though I'm talking about them, some of these things could change slightly and how they implement them could actually change. So uh, keep that in mind as you go to apply, it might be slightly different, but the gist of it should still pr stay pretty much the same. So help is on the way. And I hope everybody who listens to this can be assured that, okay, I, I, my business is going to be okay, uh, short term anyway. Uh, and if, if you're more of a, if, if a very economically disadvantaged area right now, if you're in an area of, of a hot spot, um, there might be prolonged help and this might actually be extended down the road. Well, let's just worry about the next eight or nine weeks because that's where we're going to get the most help through this program anyway. All right, so here's my advice disclaimer to you. The information presented here was compiled from public documents and news reports and are factual to the best of my ability. All information presented is general in nature and may or may not be applicable to all child care businesses. As always, please consult your CPA or attorney and get the best advice on how to apply the CARES Act to your particular business. I'm not an attorney. I don't want to be an attorney. They don't make enough money. They don't play one on TV. But um, the information I give you from a former lawmaker should be as sound as I see it. Uh, but again, it might be different. Every business is different. So check with your CPA or attorney uh, what's best for you. Who qualifies? If you're a corporation or as a sole proprietor and you have under 500 employees providing that you were in business on February 5th, 2020, you qualify. And to get the load, you have to have lost customers or had a reduction in income had staffing challenges or had your business closed, either mandated or voluntarily due to the virus. That is everybody that's listening to that, 100% of the people I've talked to, I don't know anybody in the academy that hasn't had one of those three happen to them. There's probably not a childcare uh, center on the planet that didn't have any of that thing, any of those three things happen to them. 
So how much can you borrow? This is a loan. You are borrowing money from the Small Business Administration. So the maximum amount you could borrow is two and a half times your average monthly payroll expense. So the average is computed by taking your average of your monthly payroll in the preceding 12 months prior to getting the loan. So if you're doing the loan on say April 1st, they would look back through March, uh, April 1st to April 1st, uh, the last 12 months, find out what your average monthly payroll is and multiply it times two and a half. That's the max loan. It's very simple, easy to, easy to fill out. Um, if you're a new business, then the average monthly payments from January 1st to February uh, 29th. So the example, if your average monthly payroll is $50,000, they would multiply 50,000 by two and a half and your max loan amount would be $125,000. Now, how can I spend the money? So this $125,000, and again, this is an example, you may or get more or you may get less. The maximum, pay, the maximum loan amount is $10 million. That should cover everybody in the academy. So how can I spend the money? You can spend it on payroll costs, continuation of group health care benefits during a period of paid sick leave, uh, employee salaries and commissions, interest on your mortgage obligation. So if you own your building and you pay a mortgage, uh, you can only claim in here, you can only spend from this loan money your mortgage interest and not principal. I don't know why, but that's the rules. Uh, you could pay rent as far as what's in a lease agreement. You could pay 100% of that uh, towards that, up to two months worth. You could pay utilities, any covered utility, or interest on debt obligations that occurred prior to getting the loan. Let's just say you had a van that you transport children with. Um, then the interest on that monthly payment would be, uh, you could spend that money on that interest on that payment. So you must be certified. So you must certify that you're gonna use this fund to retain workers and maintain payroll or make mortgage payments, lease payments, and utility payments. So you have to sign a certification that you're only gonna use that funds for this purpose. Guarantee. So you're asking, a lot of people asking, do I have to personally guarantee this loan? Uh, the answer is no. You do not need any collateral for this loan. Uh, pretty much guaranteed acceptance if you qualify. Then the qualification I said before, if you have a business under 500 employees and you've had economic uh, disruption, which is everybody. And from what I understand, these will be funded very quickly. A lot of times uh, the same day or within a couple of days, it's gonna be a very quick funding process. Interest rate, the interest rate will be no more than 4% and the term will be up to 10 years. So it's gonna be market driven. It'll probably be actually be lower than 4% the first year because the, uh, the interest rates are really low right now, but the max is 4%. Deferment, complete deferment of payments of a minimum of six months. So your first payment on this wouldn't be for six months and you can get as much as 12 months of deferment from your banker and not have to make payments on it for 12 months from the date of the loan. Duplication. So there's nothing prohibiting you from applying and receiving an economic injury disaster relief loan from the SBA as well as this loan. They're, they're considered two separate and you're able to do both. Loan forgiveness. So this is the most exciting part of this, uh, this piece here is, you know, your, your employees, if they go on unemployment, well, they're getting 100% of their check. But, you know, we've lost income. So the government has found a way through this loan forgiveness that you're gonna be able to actually get some of this money forgiven if you do certain things. So for the immediate eight week period following the loan, you can seek loan forgiveness for payroll costs, interest on covered mortgage, rent payments, or utility payments. So how does the loan, uh, so how does that work? So you're gonna get, um, you're gonna be paying your payroll, you're gonna be paying that mortgage, you're gonna be paying those expenses. And at the end of it, you could ask for forgiveness of up to the entire amount, 100% of what you got. So you got that 125,000. If you paid 125,000 total in salary, in mortgage, all those things combined, then they would give you 100% forgiveness. You won't have to pay that loan back at all. But the government likes to stick a button. You're gonna lose some of your forgiveness, a percentage of your forgiveness, if you don't hire your employees back. So the loan forgiveness will be reduced by multiplying and dividing. So there's a complicated formula. Basically, 
They're looking for the average number of an FTE employees per month from the February 15, 19 to June 30th, or the average number of full-time employees between January 1st and February 29th. Whichever is better for you, figure out what the FTE number is. I would go with the lower number, uh, the lower FTE number. Um, and then what you want to do, I'm going to stay on this slide a little bit, is try to get your, you want to try, you want to get your FTE to be that number or greater in the eight week period of time following this loan. So let's just say you, you computed this and your average number of FTE is 40 FTE employees on your payroll. Uh, that's your baseline. Then you're gonna wanna make sure you're paying 40 full-time equivalent employees on the other side uh, of the loan. At least for the next eight weeks, you wanna pay that 40 FTE equivalent. So whatever that dollar amount is, you want to make sure dollar amount. Whatever the hours are, you want to make the hours. Whatever the FT is, FT is all kind of apples and apples and apples here. So you want to make sure that you're paying the same on the other side. It doesn't have to be the same employees, although there is a reduction for that as well. But you're looking, they're looking to make sure that you're not shrinking your payroll. They're going to punish you for that by taking away some of your forgiveness. So the secret here is to get as much payroll on the other side to at least equal to what you paid, paid before uh, the virus. There is an additional reduction. Through rulemaking, they're probably gonna come up with some more rules here. This is the exact wordage of it. It's, it's a little bit vague. It says the amount of loan forgiveness shall be reduced by any reduction of 25% or more in total salary or wages of any employee during the eight weeks following the loan approval compared to the previous full quarter, which employee was employed. The way I read this is if you do lay somebody off, even if somebody basically quits or they went home or you didn't need them anymore and you replace them, uh, unless they come up with specific rules, which they may, that gives a waiver of certain people or maternity leave or something like that, it says they're going to deduct small part of that loan forgiveness is going to be taken away because you've laid somebody off or their, their income has been reduced by 25% or more during that period. So if you've reduced hours by 25% or pay by 25% from post-virus to pre-virus, um, then they're gonna punish you and, and take away some of your forgiveness. How much they're gonna take away, I don't know. Um, that we're gonna, as we find out, we'll let you know. But just the goal is to try to keep as many people on working about the same amount of hours in the eight weeks following the loan approval than you did the previous quarter, all right, or the previous eight weeks or whatever before the virus. So you wanna get close and then you shouldn't get hardly any uh, deduction of the loan amount, it's afterwards. So what documentation will you need? The application for, for, loan, for loan forgiveness will require payroll tax filings reported to the IRS, state income, payroll and unemployment tax filings, uh, cancel checks, payment receipts, payroll records, utility payments. So they're going to be looking at all this documentation when you go in and ask for forgiveness at the end of this. And it is required to have all of this paperwork. My recommendation to you, put 100% of this money in a separate bank sub-account. You know, I talk in my book, Child Care Millionaire, about having bank sub-accounts for savings. Well, I would definitely have a separate sub-account for this money. You don't have to open a bank account. Just ask for a sub-account and transfer money as you expend it to your business checking account to which you're gonna be paying your payroll and your mortgage and all those things. So I'll give you an example. If you run payroll that costs $31,540, I recommend transferring $31,540 to, to your business checking account. And it's much cleaner this way and at the end to show how you spent all the money uncovered, which are, i.e. forgivable expenses. So always transfer an equal amount until that loan money is gone Hopefully, it lasts exactly those eight weeks. Anything that you didn't expend uh, on that and, and it's overage, they'll probably ask for it back. So make sure that your, your covered payroll costs um, are done, it's your mortgage, all those things in there. And uh, hopefully, um, you'll have to, you'll get it completely forgiven at the end. So the way I see it, if you're still open, and generating income, or you can get open in the next couple of weeks, you have a chance to have up to two months worth of cash flow bankrolled by the government. This is huge. Why is this huge? Because during this time, you're gonna be getting tuition. 
you're going to be getting tuition from your subsidy program, your food program. You're going to be tuition from your parents. Maybe you're getting holding fees. Maybe some people are paying the full amount. Maybe some people pay for virtual preschools. So you need to get this money during this time and set it aside. Put it in a separate account. Put that money somewhere. Do not spend that money unless you absolutely have to. They say, why, Brian? Beware of the instinct to want to spend what may seem as extra money. So some of you businesses weren't that profitable before the virus. All of a sudden, in these two months, you're going to be making profits of probably 50, 60% profit margins. Why is that, Brian? Because you don't have payroll. You don't have your mortgage. You don't have utility payments. And people who are not disciplined financially will see that as, oh my God, I'm in a windfall. I'm going to go out and buy myself a new car. Big mistake. Do not do this. I'm telling you. <clears throat> the reason you must remain frugal, <clears throat> there is no guarantee after this is over that you're going to go back to the same amount of kids that you had before the virus. It's going to take a while. It could take up to a year to get back to pre-virus levels. Why is that? Because the economy has gone to a standstill. It's gonna take a while and some businesses are not gonna make it through this, even with this loan. So those people will stay off, laid off. The unemployment rate could go to 10% when this is over or more, which means that's gonna be 10, 15, 20% less kids your center has. That could be going on for a few months until the economy gets back. Take this money and use that to bankroll month three, four, five, six, any shortfall in loss of profits when you start picking up the payroll again. That money will help. This money makes up for a lot of the, the, the payroll, the uh, income that you've lost. And that'll help you cushion those that month three, four, five, and six. So the goal is to get your employees back on payroll and get them working. Uh, some may have to work from home or that some of them might work nights and weekends. Be creative. Keep them off unemployment insurance. Uh, the goal of this bill and the reason they're doing this forgiveness is so you'll keep them off the unemployment rolls. I can tell you this. If you get them on unemployment, it's going to be a hard time getting them off because they're going to make more on unemployment than they are with you. So the more you people you can get working for you during this time, even if it's working from home, doing classes, doing virtual things, you could have them come in your center on the weekend. You could have them paint. You could have them do projects. You could have them uh, clean your center. You could have them stay two, three hours at night doing deep cleans and pay them for that. So you could be creative during this time. Just get them on the payroll. The government's picking up the tab. You want to keep them made, making the same amount of money they made before. And eventually this will all be done with. So if your center is closed, you can still hire them back at their old salary, working from home if you wish, uh, until you get back to the center. And if they go on unemployment, it will be much harder to get them back because they're going to be making more money and you're going to say, oh, I want you to come back. And you say, well, I'm making more on unemployment. I don't want to come back. I'm scared. Uh, it's going to be tough for you. So that's what I have for you to say. Um, <clears throat> This bill is a savior for much of you, if not most of you. It's going to put us in a good financial position. Um, the, it, there is additional help. Should you get to the end of this, you could always apply for the economic uh, disaster relief, which will give you more ongoing expenses. I would recommend not doing that right away. I wouldn't do both right away. You're not going to need both. Uh, um, I, would ex I would exhaust all of these funds before I think about that. And remember the other loan, the SBA disaster one is not forgivable. That all, you do have to pay that one back. <laughs> so I would go with the forgivable first. It's not free money because somebody has got to pay this back eventually, but it is money to, that helps. This was through no fault of your own that this happened. <laughs> and this is the government's way of keeping people employed and keeping you in business. So be thankful. Thank your local politician for approving this. Um, I'm, I'm, I've never seen a uh, legislation acted so fast that covered so many people that had not really a whole lot of partisanship in it. Uh, both parties work really well together. <laughs> and now is not the time to bicker in that. So I'm glad that they did that. I'm very, I've been impressed with the government's response from the minute I've seen it. Uh, it's not perfect, but um, it's as perfect as I could possibly see. Um, when you don't know things, um, I mean, who knows what this, this would be. 
So I think they've been pretty good. So, and from what I've seen, for the most part, states have been more, most responsive as well either. For the most part, voucher programs and subsidy programs are stepping up and they're helping our, our people uh, through there with maybe one or two exceptions. So keep lobbying your states for that additional subsidy funds. I, I hate for anybody to sit one more minute in despair and thinking that help is not there. Help is on the way. Um, and some of you are going to be really helped really well out of this. So God bless you guys. Have an amazing rest of your weekend.